Mbepe is a town that once thrived. Now it finds itself submerged. Lying on the bare floor for hours, 12-year-old Joshua Soduhu is a vivid representation of the dire circumstances in the town. He has been battling a stomach ache enduring two days of relentless vomiting. No money to my mother to take me to hospital. In an emotional statement, Joshua shares his home has been swallowed by flood waters from the Akosombo Dam spillage, leaving him and his mother financially destitute. I have no money to take my child to the hospital. The water has carried all my belongings away. I need help. The once bustling town is now a silent witness of the profound impact of the environmental crisis and its vulnerable residents. Their plight is just one among many. As dawn breaks, the story unfolds. Gagbeto Avi, a 69-year-old farmer, stands as a symbol of countless others stripped of everything by the unforgiving floods. In the silent aftermath, his only solace is the fragile bond with his children, the last flicker of hope in the wake of the devastation. Yet, the haunting truth reverberates. My house has collapsed and I don't know where to go from here when the water recedes. It's a big worry. Babies and children are not spared in the devastation. I am sure that you watching at home can clearly tell how dangerous this is, not just for the residents, not just for Elizabeth, but also for the kids on the canoe. I am afraid. You have, why are you afraid? But the water is, the water is here, then I am afraid. When we put them in the boat and then they, they were not able to control themselves and then they fall in the water, they can die. Driven by necessity and dredge and fear, these young learners have no alternative but to undertake the perilous journey in pursuit of education. The classrooms are now makeshift homes for flood victims with each room accommodating 20 people. A temporary tent for the victims adds to their discomfort due to its plastic nature which makes the heat unbearable. Moreover, there are no beds and are scoring the challenge in living conditions they endure. It's too much to bear. The condition is terrible. You can look at the ground. This is where people sleep. Nothing to sleep on. You just lay your clothes and then you lie down. Five kilos of rice, two bags, was given to ten heads to be shared. So according to them, I will only take a cup of rice. I've been literally here for just a minute and... I can tell you that the heat here is definitely unbearable. These are the only spaces created for ventilation, but I will say that it is not enough because I, I am actually not really comfortable here. Hello. The story of Mepes history, a sad chapter unfolds as the Akosumbo Dam spillage affects communities. The strong homes are now underwater with just the rooftops peeking out. The usual sounds of daily life are replaced by the quiet flow of the floodwaters. Schools where kids used to learn and play are now beneath the murky water. Classrooms and playgrounds that were once filled with laughter are now silent. Really devastating. The Volta River Authority, which has a statutory responsibility to ensure that the lower Volta Basin is managed uh, according to law, has woefully failed. And this belated attempt to shift blame on uh, the Meteorological Services Authority and uh, others, others like, you know. Uh, uh, residents failing to respond to move to higher grounds would not wash at all the question is where are they going to move to this 
is not just a story, it's a collective tragedy. And Mepe is just one example. A town, once full of life, is now filled with the sorrowful tales of its resilient people. Godwin Asideba, TV3, Volta Region.